I never really upload videos like this on my main YouTube channel. I have my vlogging channel where I do like more daily vlogs, weekly vlogs, um, and you guys get a pretty good insight over there on what my days look like. But I thought I would just do one here on my main channel because I like doing casual videos like this in between like sit down makeup tutorials and stuff like that. I feel like it's nice to just break things up a little bit. And I just have recently managed to get back into a routine so yeah I thought it'd be fun to just document my day I've got a pretty busy day ahead with work stuff and just life in general so yeah I'm excited to bring you guys along it is currently 10 past 7 in the morning I've just finished my workout so my routine for the past week has actually been getting up at 5 a.m. every morning which sounds crazy but Ben actually gets up at 4 30 every morning so I still feel like I'm getting a little bit of a sleep in compared to him. And then I get up and make myself a coffee. You guys saw this morning, I have my Before You Speak coffee as a pre-workout. And then, yeah, just get myself ready for the gym. And I've been meeting my friend Kayla at the gym at 6 a.m. We've currently been doing the Chloe Ting two-week shred. Oh my God. <laughs> it is insane. We're on day four of it and we've got a rest day tomorrow, which I am so looking forward to. But Chloe Ting is a weapon. This workout, like, it's insane, but I'm so, so glad that I'm doing it. Like, I feel so much better, and I feel like I'm already noticing some results. Like, I don't want to speak too soon, but I do feel like my stomach has definitely flattened out. I don't look bloated anymore. I feel really good, like, my energy levels and everything. Like, it's just such a good way to start the day. So, yeah, the main purpose of it is that I've actually got my engagement party in two and a half weeks or two weeks and so we decided to do the Chloe Ting two week shred as like a little workout program leading up to the engagement party that was like our our little two week goal so this little workout program is perfect for that and yeah I'm really enjoying it so far it's hard but I am enjoying it so anyways I'm gonna head home now and make myself some breakfast have a protein shake and I will catch up with you guys then so you guys saw me tucking in this little guy this morning <laughs> I've just got home and he has not moved at all. I've been gone for two hours. I must have tucked you in really well. Hey Comfy. Hi handsome boy. Alright, so it is breakfast time. I'm going to make myself a protein smoothie and some rice cakes with avocado, tomato and cottage cheese. That's been like my go-to breakfast at the moment. I really struggle with like gluten-free breakfasts, so I feel like now that I've found this and I really like it, I'm just like going for it. I have it every morning. I don't get sick of it. And I really enjoy it. It's like a good source of healthy fats and protein too. So the cottage cheese is high in protein. And then obviously the avocado has got the healthy fats. So I feel like it's just a really good balanced breakfast. And then obviously I have the protein smoothie as well, which is extra protein. I'm trying to make sure I get like a really good protein intake during the day. So having a protein smoothie in the morning is such a good way to start that and kick that off. So I'm going to run you guys through my protein smoothie quickly. This video is in collaboration with Tropeka. I love them. You guys know I love them. I adore them. They are a huge part of my life. I literally use a Tropeka product every single day, whether it's the protein, whether it's the body bloom, whether it's one of the superfood powders. Like I literally have Tropeka every single day. So I'm going to show you my smoothie this morning, which I 
use the Tropica Salted Caramel Protein. This is a brand new packet here because I'm nearly out. I like to put them in these little jars just for storing because it's easier. I don't have a lot of storage space in my kitchen. I still don't know what my favorite flavor is. I feel like I go through phases where salted caramel is my favorite and then I'll switch back to vanilla and I'm like obsessed with the vanilla as well. And then the chocolate, like they're all really, really good. I think it just depends on personal preference, but I myself cannot for the life of me choose. I love them all. So it's a really easy smoothie recipe, super basic. I don't go too over the top just because I am calorie counting at the moment. So all I use is some ice, water, a banana, and two heaped tablespoons of this protein powder. This is really, really great because it is gluten-free and dairy-free. So it doesn't bloat me. It's really easy on my digestion. It's refined, sugar-free, organically grown, all of that good stuff. Like it's just genuinely a really, really good product. So if you guys are in the market for a new protein powder, I would highly recommend trying the Tropica Lean Proteins. Amazing, so, so good. Anyways, I'm gonna stop talking your ear off now and I'll show you how I make this super simple smoothie. And then this is my breakfast. So I literally just have two of these rice cakes with tomato, avocado, and cottage cheese, and then my protein shake. And then that usually fills me up until lunchtime. So usually while I eat breakfast, I go and sit in front of my computer and try and get some emails done and just like import footage and like all of that kind of boring computer stuff. And then I'm gonna jump in the shower and freshen up and get ready for the day. later and I feel like I've spent the entire morning doing like 10 loads of washing. I just have so much to catch up on because it was raining for like a week here in Brisbane so I'm basically like at the end of it now I only have one more load to hang out and then I am done but I need to actually shoot some content this afternoon so I've just made myself another coffee because I feel like I need an extra little caffeine hit today. I'm really struggling. I'm just really tired. I think the first week of getting up at 5 a.m. every morning is like slowly catching up to me. So I've made myself a second coffee for a little bit of an energy boost and I'm gonna sit down and do my makeup now. I was going to film a video doing my makeup but I just don't think I have that kind of energy today. <laughs> So I'm just gonna do my makeup off camera and then shoot the content that I need to do later. And I'll show you guys like a behind the scenes of how I shoot my Instagram content when I'm just at home by myself. So yeah, my skin's pretty bad at the moment too, which I'm sure you guys can notice. It doesn't help that I was picking at it earlier, but it's just been flaring up a little bit lately and I'm not sure if it's because of like the exercise and sweating. It shouldn't be because I basically have a shower as soon as I get home. It could also just be the fact that I was on my period this week, so. Who really knows? I'm not too fussed about it, but yeah. I also have like a little bit of a dermatitis rash, which is super strange. I don't know, my skin's just gone a bit crazy altogether, but yeah, time for some makeup and hopefully I feel a little bit better once that's done. All right, so I've just finished my makeup. I kept it pretty natural. I just literally did my base and then some lower lash mascara and a little bit on my eyebrows. I um, got my lash extensions done yesterday, so they're nice and fresh and full. So I feel like I don't really need to do anything to my eyes. That's why I love lash extensions. They just make me feel complete and they honestly make doing makeup so, so easy. I've literally just had my washing machine, which means I have another load of washing to hang out. So I'm gonna do that. It's literally just towels now. Like I've finished all of the clothes and now I'm onto towels. So the end is near. I'm so sick of doing laundry. I've also had a couple of packages arrive while I was doing my makeup, so I'm gonna go and quickly hang out 
this load of towels and then I'll come back and I'll open the packages on camera for you guys. All right, so I've got three packages to open, which is super exciting. I actually don't get that much PR anymore, which I'm very glad about. I'm not saying that in a negative way at all. PR is like, it's just a really funny thing. Like it's great to get free products and stuff. And I feel like that's what a lot of viewers would see it as. But when you work in the industry and when you've worked in the industry for so many years, like I think I've been doing this for like five or six years now, PR gets to a point where it's like, it's so wasteful for starters. Like I have so much product that I just do not use. And I feel like it goes to waste. Like I give so much stuff away just because I literally can't use it all. Um, not only that, the amount of waste that it actually like produces. My recycling bin used to always be completely full of just boxes from PR. So I don't know, I'm just, I'm a little bit glad that I'm not receiving as much anymore. And I don't know why that is. Maybe it's because of COVID or maybe, I don't know, maybe brands are just not into doing it as much. I really don't know. But anyways, when I do get PR, I obviously get still excited about it because it's new products and a lot of the time it's new launches or something like that. And I do like trying different things, but yeah, I'm definitely glad that I don't get as much anymore. So I'm pretty sure this first one is from Pat McGrath. It is, they always do the most extravagant PR packages. Dark Star is what it says. Dark Star Mascara. Damn it, I've got lash extensions on, so I literally won't be able to test this out until I decide to not have lash extensions anymore, I guess. Oh, there's a few things in here. I have no idea what this is. I think it's like a massive poster. Yeah, it is, wow, okay. A precision liquid eyeliner. How do I open this? <laughs> so much packaging okay so it looks like it is a fine tip liquid liner again i don't really use liquid liner much when i've got lashes on either so i probably won't get to use this for a while okay so it looks like this is an eye crayon pencil maybe an eyeliner or yeah it looks like it's an eyeliner there's something else in here as well but oh my gosh oh it's a sharpener okay so we've got a black eyeliner pencil with a sharpener um it looks like this might be the mascara instant volume stretch effect length anti-gravity lift oh my gosh i'm guessing that's just a fancy way of saying it will hold the curl of your lashes <laughs> super cute just gold packaging it actually looks like really really similar packaging to the new mark jacobs mascara that just came out awesome i'll obviously give that a try once i don't have lashes and then they've got Oh, it looks like there's a mini one as well. A mini mascara. I literally am just obsessed with anything mini. This kind of stuff is so good for traveling as well. So I love when I get mini products because it means that I can just pack it in like a travel makeup bag and you save so much space doing it like that. And they also sent a face mask as well because I guess with everything going on in the world at the moment, I'm actually really excited about this because I don't have a face mask. And honestly, with the way that things are going right now with the stats in Australia, like we're having another spike. So I was literally saying to Ben the other day that we should get some just in case. So this is great. No one does mascara like Maybelline. I feel like it's another mascara. Yup. It's three new mascaras. Oh my God. The timing, the one time I cannot use mascara and I just, I've just been sent five mascaras. Cute little package though. So I guess this is all of Maybelline's most popular mascaras. I actually have a few of these in my drawer already. So I'll probably give these to either friends or family or keep them for a giveaway maybe. Okay, so this one is from Murad Skincare. So I definitely know that this one's not going to be a mascara. Ooh, it's actually a Murad Retinol Youth Renewal Serum. Advanced line and wrinkle smoothing. My God, do I need that right now? I am sold. My skin's been playing up a bit at the moment though. So I'm a bit scared to add any more skincare products into my skincare regime, but I'll see how I go. Maybe give it a week for my skin to calm down and then I might start trialing this out. Okay, so the Instagram post that I have to shoot this afternoon is actually a sponsored post for a brand that I'm working with. And that brand is Mermaid Hair. I have tried out this hair tool for the past three weeks. I always like to trial products before I post about them obviously just to make sure that i do actually like them before i talk to you guys about them but yeah i've tried this out a few times you guys would have seen on my instagram that i've posted a few 
photos of me with like the mermaid waves in my hair and I did them with this tool here. It is so easy to use. So I thought I would show you guys a little snippet of how I use this tool because so many of you were interested. So here we go. So when you plug it in, it lights up and then you turn it on. So you can change the heat setting on it. I just have it on 180. I'm pretty sure that's the standard heat setting. And as it's heating up, I don't know if you can see here, but the numbers here actually go up with it to tell you like it is getting hotter and then you know how far away it is from being 180 degrees. It also has a little stand here so that you can actually put it down on a surface without it making the surface hot or melting anything. All right, so I like to do mine in sections just because I've got quite thick hair, so I find it easier to just separate my hair into halves, I guess. And I just tie the top layer up here just so that it's out of the way into a little bun so it looks really cute for a hot minute until you finish styling. And then I grab a section of hair that is obviously no thicker in width to this bad boy here because then that would defeat the purpose and you would miss a bunch of hair. And you just clamp it down to separate it and then... Sorry, I'm trying to do this while I look in the mirror otherwise I am actually going to burn myself. You literally just thread your hair through the wand release the clamp and I just let it sit there for about 10 to 15 seconds before I move it and then literally just line up the waves with the wand. I don't know if this is making any sense. I feel like this is so simple that it's hard to actually explain. And once I get to the bottom, if I've got a little bit like this sticking out, I just leave it because you can go over it at the end to like clean it up and just add a little bit of a flick in if you need to. And then yeah, that is how it looks. So I'll leave this styler down below as well in the description box if you guys are interested in it. done you can just like go over any areas that you feel like need fixing like I feel like this side at the front compared to this side does not look great so I'll probably go over that and fix it and then if you feel like there's any ends that just didn't really like flick the way you wanted to you can always just go over them with a straightener and like flick it with the straightener but yeah I actually feel like this doesn't look too bad I think I did an okay job so there's only a few things I need to fix up but that's literally how easy it is so Hopefully you guys enjoyed this little hair segment. Okay, so this is now the most difficult part. My house does not have good lighting at all. So the best time of the day for me to shoot inside my house is this time, which is like three o'clock in the afternoon. Basically any time from like three until four, 4.30 at the moment is really good. But there's only a few spots in my house that get decent lighting. So I've also set my phone up on this tripod here. So I've just got a little like phone attachment thing. I don't even know if I can show you guys. Yeah, so this here is like a little attachment that just goes onto my tripod and then it holds my phone. So it just makes it easy when I'm at home by myself and don't have anyone to take photos for me. But the only problem is that this phone, which is the iPhone X, which I think is like the 10, iPhone 10 basically, the camera is so, so bad. So what I've actually been recently doing is using this camera, which is my Canon 80D to take my Instagram photos. Usually if I ever take a photo on a phone, I use my friend Kayla's because she's got the newest iPhone and it just... I don't know, the camera quality is so much better. But sometimes in really good lighting, this works. So fingers crossed, I'm going to try the phone camera first and see how it goes. And then yeah, plan B, which usually ends up having to come into play is to use my DSLR. So we'll see how we go. Okay, so this spot right here near my back door is one of the best spots because the afternoon sun actually reflects off of the polished concrete out there and creates really, really good lighting. It's hard to show you guys because obviously the phone is being backlit right now, but basically the lighting here is really good. So I'm going to try out a test shot on my phone here. The only problem is that I don't like this background. Like it's my lounge room, it's my couch, 
Coop is literally on the couch asleep. I've got my blankets there. It's just not the ideal background, but we'll see if we can make it work. Oh my God. <laughs> my legs are so flipping sore from working out. All right. I feel like I was just doing like a full on two minute squat then, but it's where the good lighting is. So you gotta do what you gotta do. All right, I'm gonna have a look through these photos. They've actually not turned out too badly. The photos are still really grainy, but sometimes I actually put a grain on the photos when I edit them. So if it's not too much grain, I can kind of work with it. But the lighting, is really good. So I think I might try and just like play around and edit some of these for a sec and just see if I can make them work. All right, so this is the photo that I've ended up with. All I've really done is put my Lightroom preset over it, which just makes my skin look a little bit more tanned and also brightens any of the whites in the photos. I also just made the shadows in the back a little bit darker just so that it wasn't so obvious in the background, if that makes sense. And then yeah, just had to play around with the colors just until I was happy with it. But it's basically just a preset from Lightroom that I put over the top. I use Casey Brim's presets. Again, I'll, I'll link them down below. I'll link anything I mention in this video down below, but I'm also just going to go and put a dust filter on top because I really like how dust filters look. I feel like it just gives the photo a bit of a vintage vibe, which I think is really cool. So this is the Afterlight app. And I usually use either the first or the second one. I think I might actually use the first one for this one. And you can just like change the intensity of it. You can change the dust from like a light to a dark dust. I usually like a white dust and I bring it down to about 70% and that is basically it. That's how I edit my photos. Super quick and easy. Afterlight is such a cool app, by the way. You can do so many different things on there. So it's got different light features as well. So you can add in like, I mean, these are all pretty full on, but if you scroll across, They've got like white lights and you can change the color of the light. Like it's pretty cool. Um, you can also do a chroma, which also looks really cool. Sometimes I put this on my photos. If I ever put it on my photos, I literally put like maybe 10 to 15% on, but it just makes them pop a little bit. It just looks really cool. You can honestly do so much in Afterlight. You can play around with the brightness, the contrast, all of that general stuff. You can crop and straighten your photos. They've also got their own filters, but I literally only do a filter in the Lightroom app and that's it. So yeah, that is basically the final picture that I'll be submitting to the brand. When influencers do sponsored content, or oh. I can only really speak for myself, but I'm pretty sure this is like an industry standard. But when you do sponsored content, you actually have to send the post to the brand for approval and you have to send the picture along with the caption that you're going to post as well. So that's basically what I need to do now is I need to come up with a caption for that photo and then submit it to my management who then pass it on to the brand. So yeah. That's basically it. Thought I'd give you guys a little behind the scenes on how sponsored content works, particularly on Instagram, because this is an Instagram post, but yeah, hope you found it interesting. <laughs> I also just realized you guys might be interested in this, but to plan out my feed, I use this app here, which is called Unum. And basically I just use it to see how my grid is going to look with any photos that I haven't yet posted. So I think up until this point is my grid. So you can go in and you can move photos around so that you can see how it looks um, and kind of plan out your feed a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is add in that photo that I just took. Sorry about Cooper barking in the background and then place it on my feed. And you can basically get an idea of what your Instagram feed will look like before you actually upload the photos for good. So yeah, little tip if you guys are wanting to improve your feed or have more of like an aesthetic theme on your Instagram, you can plan ahead using this app. All right, so Ben is due home in like half an hour, 40 minutes. And I usually like to finish up my work day once he's home, just cause I like to be present and spending time with him. 
when he's here. So I'm going to quickly import all of the footage from this video that you're actually watching now and start editing that video. And I'll just do that until he gets home because I don't really have anything else. I was going to try and shoot some other Instagram photos, but to be completely honest, I'm just not feeling it today. I wanted to like push myself to do it because I haven't uploaded on Instagram this week and I feel really bad when I'm not consistent, but I'm just not in the mood for photos. I think I'm just exhausted. I've got my period. It's just one of those days. So yeah, just going to spend the rest of the afternoon editing. And then I think tonight for dinner, I'm actually going to make spaghetti bolognese. I make bends with normal mints, but obviously I don't eat meat. So mine is like a vegan spaghetti bolognese. I use lentils instead. So I'll show you guys that a little bit later as well for dinner. All right. So it is dinner time and I just grabbed everything out so that I could show you guys all of the ingredients. And then I'm probably going to do like a time-lapse style video of me cooking it all but basically this is my favorite pasta sauce it's the macro organic tomato garlic and basil pasta sauce and if you have a look at the ingredients it's really whole ingredients so it's actually quite healthy for you a lot of pasta sauces are packed full of sugar so I try and stay away from stuff like that this does have a little bit of sugar in it but compared to most other pasta sauces it doesn't so i think the main ingredient is actually tomatoes and then sugar is all the way down here so this is just my personal favorite and it's actually not too expensive either so i always get two of them because i make up a massive batch of spaghetti for ben and i so that we've got leftovers and then i also like to add in a can of diced tomatoes as well so like i said to you guys before obviously i don't eat meat so i cook up the mints for ben but then for myself i add in lentils and I actually think I like this version better than using the fake meat um, and it's a lot healthier for you as well so I'm gonna chuck some lentils in once the sauce is simmering but um, obviously this is the spaghetti that Ben uses and then I use the pulse pasta spaghetti because this is gluten free so essentially I'm cooking like two different dinners but I don't really mind it's quite easy and we end up with a lot of food so this will probably last us a couple of nights um, and then I like to chop up some veggies to put in mine as well, just for a little bit of extra nutrients. And then I always dice up some onion and garlic and chuck that in right at the start as well. So these are all of the ingredients and it is time to get cooking.
dinner is served. So this is obviously mine. Vegan, gluten-free, amazing. And then this is Ben's. <laughs> he loves meat. He will never, ever be vegetarian. So I really don't mind cooking up the meat for him. So yeah, there we go. So same meal, but kind of different. All right, guys, I'm going to end the video here and go and eat dinner and just relax for the rest of the night. So I hope you have enjoyed this day in my life vlog. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you are new here. I do also have a discount code for Tropica if you guys are interested in picking up any of their products. I highly recommend their lean proteins as well as their BCAAs and also the Sarah's Day Body Bloom. They're probably like the three products that I use the most. Everything will be linked down below in the description box as always. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys. So don't let go on the no no hold me.